I have a lot of experience with police and how they handle my family. My family, um, like several times, my dad gets pulled ahead for so many tickets. Yeah. My dad's really dark and brown, mm -hmm. and then my mom's really light and she's Muslim. She has very covered. Mm -hmm. So like that, just just that by itself shows mm -hmm. how like where I feel I feel the different treatment. You mm -hmm. know, when it comes to us and how they handle issues with us. Like I'm sure if I was white, I would have been treated mm -hmm. better. Right. I know it. Like I know I see I see the way they handle other people, mm -hmm. but then with us, it's like. No, you're not. Like they'll, they'll. If my dad was white, I'm sure they would have let a few tickets slide mm -hmm. when he's on the highway. Right. But they always catch him, and they never let him slide. He's had so many. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's. I think that police in everywhere. It's not just in like Ferguson. I think everywhere they're problematic. Yeah. So it's just interesting for me to look at this history and be like, where do I fit into this mm -hmm. as a first generation Egyptian immigrant mm -hmm. who came from Canada? Mm -hmm. Like you know, like where do I fit in with all of this? So it's all. It's very interesting for me to like look at it and then so i was just crying because it just hit me like like the amount of melanin you have in your skin like that basically dictates the quality of your life so something you have like just a genetic predisposition that you have no, no control over can like mm -hmm. will basically dictate the quality of your life mm -hmm. and so i just like it broke my heart like it just broke my heart. so i feel like um the really interesting thing about ferguson is that uh, i read an article about why muslims should be concerned about what's happening in ferguson mm -hmm. and it's because the very first slaves brought to this country were muslims from african countries mm -hmm. and they had their religion like being out of them because it's you know backwards and wrong right so like for me ferguson and what's happening to black people is really sad and really scary because like my dad's not black but he's really dark you know so he's still racialized in a way that's like um especially being muslim like they're you know the whole islam <clears throat> muslims are the new negroes mm -hmm. like I think other communities should be involved, firstly because this is a human rights issue and other people are, you know, losing their lives and facing violence, just just the fact that they are black or they are brown and because of the color of their skin, you know, our law enforcement, our government, you know, sees them as unworthy and sees them, you know, we our system has demeaned them and dehumanized them. Um, and I think other communities should really step up and show that, you know, we don't want to stand for this and we don't want to allow this to happen without us putting an effort mm -hmm. into trying to make things better for our fellow human beings. Um, because Today it's X community, tomorrow it's Y community, next month it's going to be Z community, and then we're going to start back over at the beginning of the alphabet. So essentially, I guess everybody's going to have their turn, per se. So when it's your turn, do you want to be able to turn to people to help you out? Do you want to be able to turn to people that's going to understand where you're coming from? The And, and there's power in numbers, like, you know, and... I know that's cliche and everything, but it's really true. There's power in numbers, and you live the experience, and yeah, you can explain this experience, but your experience is going to be ten times more powerful when you have someone that doesn't necessarily identify with the group of people that are going through this experience, and they can articulate their, your story better than you. When this Martin Luther King Day came around, especially what's what's what is what's what's happening with um Islamophobia, the yeah. upsurge of Islamophobia, mm -hmm. and what's happening with police brutality. I feel like I'm seeing all the intersectionalities now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing why it's related to me. I'm seeing that if Martin Luther King was alive, he would just shake his head and like get back to work because he's like we're so far from like pr actual progress. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like progress to white people because black and white people can get married now. Right. Black people can get jobs now. Right. But is it really progress? Mm -hmm. It's not progress if we can't we, if we don't feel like we can fulfill our fullest potential, mm -hmm. and if we and if, if there's anybody who still feels like the color of their skin can dictate the quality of their life, then we haven't achieved progress. You know. The reason I have involved myself with a lot of actions and organization um, in relation to police brutality and systematic violence against Black people because is because I feel that as a South Asian and as an Asian American person, um, I feel that I ha have privilege in the mm -hmm. sense that I may not have the same risk of being of being in contact with violence. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that being who I am, I can I can utilize my privilege and um, um, use the knowledge and expertise I have 
for this movement and because you know, I, I just care and I think this is a grave injustice that is happening and that is just recently receiving nationwide attention, although it's been happening for a long time. Recently on Martin Luther King Day, I went to Oakland for mm -hmm. this March, the this March for MLK Day and, and it was a very profound experience for me because um, in Oakland, a lot of I saw a lot of communities show up and show their support. I saw a lot of South Asians. I saw a lot of Asians. I saw a lot of Arabs and Muslims, um, and just a wide um, diversity of people at this movement. And it was so profound and so um, representative of of diversity and the fact that just so just so, um I mean, just the reason that like we all should care and that we sh all should step up, and it was it was really it, was, it felt really safe to be there and felt really welcoming. Uh, actually, I have. <laughs> yeah, I have, and I actually had never participated in a protest or a rally or anything like that um, until I got to San Jose State, and it was after the hate crime happened. Um, there was the initial rally and then there was the second rally and I actually went from not having participated in anything to actually thinking of planning, helping plan the second rally which was um, a beautiful moment for me and to see to see it actually come to fruition was a beautiful moment and to see the reaction of the people who was witnessing the process was also a beautiful moment never really think about like the process of what's going on and all these kinds of things. I knew we needed like a core group of like people so if something happened or something went wrong we needed to be able to identify who everybody was to have that central line of communication and then from there we needed to decide like what kind of protests did we want to have because you know not all protests are the same and so um, because we felt like as students we were being silenced, we decided that we were going to um, have a silent protest, but what did that mean? We had to figure out what that meant, and then we started having all these different ideas and we decided to have tape and for people to put tape on their mouths and just to have signs and have it be a silent protest since as students we felt like we were being silenced and upstaged and not heard. Um, things are never going to go the way that you think they're going to go or how you want them to go. So you have to be flexible and be able to roll with the punches. Um, you also have to know that not everybody is going to come through like they say that they're going to come through. So you be able to identify your core group of people that you know that you're going to be able to go to and that they're going to be able to get things done. Slavery was invented in like the 15th century. Yeah. It's gonna take hundreds of years. There's right. no such thing as a solution. Mm -hmm. Like I think that like um, there are people who genuinely believe sla like in racism. Mm -hmm. Like they think that like black people are a certain way, Muslims mm -hmm. are a certain way, and people like that just like you just have to wait till they die. Like you can't mm -hmm. really convince them of anything. Like you just can't. It just it's just not possible. Like when 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 people believe things really surely, there's no way you yeah. can talk to them about it. So I don't really think that anything like. I guess I'm a pessimist, but I really just don't think like 10 years of the civil rights movement is going to change 500 years of conditioning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to take another 500 right. just, to start, just to get people yeah. not thinking like that. Personally, I think the best way to show support is to educate oneself mm -hmm. because I think the greatest form of activism is to be intelligent. Yep. Because if you're intelligent, that sh shuts down every stereotype that people might have about you. And so for me, the in stereotypes are, are like, uh, like as a Muslim, oh, you're oppressed, oh, you're this, oh, you're this. like all these things aren't true. But like if I'm educated and if I know about everything that I need to know about, mm -hmm. then that really shuts down that kind of um, rhetoric, you know? Yeah. So I always find that the greatest form of activism is to achieve your highest self. To me, allyship means to listen actively to the struggles and injustices other people are facing and to, you know, believe people when they s tell us what they're facing or who they are as human beings. That's a quote um, I've heard. Um, Janet Mock used a lot in in understanding the lives of trans people to to listen and to believe believe people when 
they tell us who they are and tell us what they're going through and why. Um, and to not question it and to not um, tell people what they're going through or how to feel about it, but to welcome those feelings and validate those feelings mm -hmm. and to understand the privileges that we have as allies and to constantly be um, looking at ourselves and checking our privilege at, that we have, um, not just socially in a widespread context, but in our personal lives, like what things have I personally been through and not been through and why that might have been and to, um, you know, help build up marginalized communities and oppressed communities in a certain issue and certain context, um, to not speak for them, to not, um, take up their space or their opportunity to shine, but to give them the opportunity and give them the space for them to tell their own stories and for them to, um, for them to, um, be at the forefront of their own movements. Allyship is, for what? When it comes to allyship, you should want to do something because you want to do it, not because you feel obligated to do it. And allyship means, A, you need to understand, and part of understanding is knowing that you're going to ask questions that may be politically incorrect, you're going to say things that may be wrong, you're going to do things that may be wrong, and part of that allyship and understanding is having moments of education from the person you're trying to be an ally with, and to the people who they're trying to be an ally too. Mm -hmm. So you need to recognize that things are going to go wrong and part of being an ally is having those moments of education so that you can understand because you're not going to know everything, you're, you're not going to know every experience, you're not going to know when you're doing something wrong unless someone is willing to tell you and unless you're willing to receive the correction. Be aware that you're fighting for a cause that's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. So you could be doing something or saying something that people could be perceived could perceive one way or a way that you didn't intend to beat it. So just know that you're, you're representing a cause that's bigger than you. And in order for you to do that, ask those questions, even if they're, they're wrong. Fake those mistakes. Do those things. But have people around you that will correct you and that will give you the information that you need to be a powerful. Protest police brutality, but in the midst of the protest, you're receiving police brutality. So, um... I don't really think very many things that have been tried have been effective. So I wouldn't even recommend those or say those are things that people have done to fight police brutality because all they received was police brutality.